You ever been in the middle of telling a story and then suddenly the story changes? We were telling a story about New Orleans musicians when the COVID-19 pandemic struck. Now it's a very different story, but because it's New Orleans, music is still very much at its heart. It's funny. The weather has been near perfect this past week. Temperatures and humidity down from unseasonable records. Cool mornings and warm afternoons under high, clear skies. Sweetest spring you could wish for. And then there's everything else. The city's health system is stretched but not yet snapped. That'll be by the end of this week, when the state is expected to run short of beds and ventilators. The field hospital at the convention center and the logistical village to support it are being prepared to catch the overflow. And in a story guaranteed to restore your lack of faith in humanity, the director of public safety at the convention center was arrested for allegedly stealing N95 masks. In news of actual human beings, Groups of medical professionals are arriving from other cities to assist, with 15 nurses coming in from Kansas City to help at Tulane Hospital, and hundreds more signed up from around the country. In other bright spots, self-isolation, social distancing, and now mask wearing are catching on. Honestly, it's not hard to get us to wear masks. We're far from perfect, but people and businesses are trying. The crew to Fool celebrated April Fool's Day by moving their annual parade from the streets to their bedrooms and backyards. With streamed concerts and wine delivery, we're keeping our spirits up for what's coming. The numbers are bad, though how bad is hard to tell, with still too many limitations and delays in testing. Monday, the state reported just under 15,000 known positives with 512 dead. On Saturday, the city hit its own milestone of 4,000 cases, 1% of our population. And by the end of this month, around the time we'd usually be celebrating Jazz Festival, Orleans Parish will have lost one out of a thousand of its citizens to the virus. And horrifying as these numbers are, for many of us, A crisis isn't quite real until it touches someone we know, someone we respect or admire. This week, we lost all three in one person. Ellis Marcellus Jr. was born November 14, 1934, to Florence and Ellis Marcellus Sr. of New Orleans. Ellis Sr. was a successful businessman, the first African-American owner of an Esso gas franchise in New Orleans. Later, he became the first black hotelier in Jefferson Parish, opening Marcellus Mansion, a luxury motel for African-Americans barred from New Orleans' fine hotels. The motel and restaurant became famous in the Jim Crow era playing host to musical legends like Cab Calloway and Ray Charles, as well as prominent civil rights leaders like Thurgood Marshall and Martin Luther King Jr. The young Marcellus worked for a time at the motel after serving in the Marines, but the hospitality industry couldn't hold a candle to his true passion. Though he'd studied saxophone in high school, Marcellus switched to piano while studying classical music at Dillard University and later Loyola. He took all that knowledge and brought it to the new jazz sound evolving in post-war America, collaborating and performing with Cannonball Adderley, Fathead Newman, Al Hurt, and Harold Batiste Jr.'s American Jazz Quintet. 
Over seven decades and scores of records, he became recognized as one of the all-time giants of jazz. Marcellus's proudest accomplishments came in his role as an educator. At Virginia Commonwealth University, UNO, Xavier, and NOCA, the New Orleans Center for the Creative Arts. He taught future talents like Harry Connick Jr. and Terrence Blanchard, as well as his own sons who grew to be renowned musicians in their own rights. While for others, Ellis Marcellus may be an icon. For most of us here, he was a friend and neighbor, a beloved teacher, the fellow who'd come by the studio every week or so to play the piano because he liked the action. He was woven into our lives. What is hardest about all of this, and what will be harder still in coming days, is that we can no longer properly say goodbye to our friends. Funerals and second lines, so central to our understanding of life, death, and life beyond, can't roll. Five members of the Zulu Social Aid and Pleasure Club have fallen to the disease. They will not be walked to their resting places to the strains of a closer walk with thee. There will come a day when the tide has receded, when we can rejoin one another. There will be music and dance and play, but it will be different. We're beginning to realize how different The music you're hearing is from a house concert Friday evening by New Orleans pianist and professor of music, Sandy Hinderley. He opened his front door and played arrangements of standards, traditional songs, and pop, while neighbors listened from a distance. Before the program, Hinderley spoke briefly from his porch of his fellow musician and educator. Ellis since 1981, and and uh, he, when he was teaching at NOCA, I would see him at work and it was pretty amazing. He was real low key, and, but he had this, uh, this dynamic of talking no nonsense and uh, really had uh, a great influence on so many musicians. We'll leave you with Henderley's arrangement of Anne Runnell's Willow Weep For Me. Until next time, we wish you good health and good friends.